Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome back to Project Hospital, where things seem to be going quite well in the hospital at the moment. We've got a great big pile of money, $114,000, that's quite nice, and we are slowly but surely working our way through a few of the insurance goals, although a couple of these we have hit a little bit of a barrier with, like that one there for Overcure Inc. We know about this one because it's been up there for absolutely ages, have no untreated patients for 10 days, and currently we're on 2 out of 10 because we keep failing and it keeps dropping back down to zero. I don't know if we're ever going to complete that. I'm not sure if we're ever going to get that done. So we kind of have to write that one off, I would say. I mean, they do pay quite well, so we might keep them on board, but I don't think we can complete that goal. And then down here, this appeared last time for Happy Life, successfully finish six epidemic events. I mean, that's quite the challenge. That's really difficult to do because as we've seen time and time again, the epidemic events are quite hard. They're quite tricky to do. And then every time you do one of those, you do risk a little bit of an outbreak in your hospital and all that kind of stuff. However, the reward for that is very good indeed. Look at that 400 thousand dollars you'd get for completing those six epidemic events it's just quite tricky to do so we might possibly think about getting that done at some point this one down here we could do a couple of accident events and that one up there we need to do two more natural disaster events so that's also quite achievable however there is one insurance company here that we haven't looked at at all, Upsy Corp over here. So to even unlock them, to get them on board, we have to do something very exciting. And that's what we're going to do today. We get to create our own doctor with the character editor, which does sound very exciting. And I have a good idea of who we should create and where they should go. So let's go and have a look at where I think they should go and work. Now, a few people did point this out. Down here, in intensive care, we don't really have very much of a doctor staff going on. If we go and have a quick look, hang on, go like that. So in terms of doctors, we've got two people working on the day shift and two people working on the night shift, and that's it, in intensive care. And as we've seen, intensive care gets very busy. In fact, it's really busy right now. How many people have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 11 people, and those 11 people have to be looked after by two doctors and three nurses. I mean, three nurses might be okay. That might be okay. But two doctors is definitely not okay. So I think we add another couple of doctors in here. Definitely get up to three, if not getting up to four on the day shift and four on the night shift. And then maybe get some extra nurses as well. But I think let's create, where are we now? Midnight. So we'll create a day shift doctor and a night shift doctor, all of our very own. And I know who we should create. So the only thing is, I don't quite know how to do this. I don't know where the button is or what to press or anything. So here we go. It's a step into the unknown. So they're the staff that we could get. Where is, where's the button that will allow us to create our own person? Hang on. Can we filter it on, say, are they, they're not very good options, are they? They're not good options. Have we got any decent people for advanced diagnosis? No, we haven't. Although actually, do you know what? Casey Cole actually isn't that bad. Is it worth just getting Casey Cole in? Um... We could possibly just get them in anyway. I think we create a couple of people. I've got an idea for the pair of people that we could create. Joe, we'll put them over there. Look, hang on. Let's get, let's get, where are you? Where are you, Casey Cole? You can come in, Casey Cole. We'll get you on board. This wasn't the plan. I was going to create our own people, but I've just seen you and thought, do you know what? Yes. So get you on board. And then who else could we get? Well, Paul Smith. Oh, hang on. You're hiding things from us, Paul Smith. Um... Let's reveal your secrets. Right, no, we're not. <laughs> oh, dear me, an alcoholic depressed person. You are definitely going to bring the uh, the rating of the department down a bit there, Paul Smith. Um, okay, there is nobody here that I'd like. Hang on, we're going to, this is this is not what I planned to do. Hang on a minute, find new candidates. Um, and then, yeah, order it by that. And then can we reveal your secrets? I'm kind of looking at you, Susan Cole. Um, okay, you're a germaphobe, you wash your hands a lot, that's okay. Diagnostic genius and comforting. Okay, we'll have you. So we'll have those two, so that's fine. So they're two just regular doctors from the regular doctor pool, one on the day shift, one on the night shift. We do need to get the nurses in as well, actually. Do you know what? We'll do that and then we'll go make our own characters. That's what we're going to do. So let's get some more nurses in as well just to help out around the place because it's very busy down here now and I think they do need quite a lot of help. And these are you know, proper, actual, critically ill patients. We have to make sure they're being really well looked after. So let's go and see what nurses we can get. I mean, yeah, we don't need surgery nurses, possibly clinical nurse specialist. That might be quite good. Oh, Susan Johnson, you might be ideal for the night shift. But you're unpleasant. No, Susan Johnson, we're not going to go for that. Um, Linda Jones. Yeah, you're okay. 
33% clinical nurse specialist, 45% patient care. That will do. So you come in. And then over here, can we get anybody else? One of these. Um, Susan Anderson. You are hiding a secret from us. What is... Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> You like a little bit of a drink before work. Okay, no, maybe not you then. Um, okay, uh, you might be okay. Reveal the secrets. Oh, crikey. Hang on, Linda Williams, good at working in the day. Okay, can we switch you to the night shift, Linda Jones? Can we put Can we put you on the night shift? Can we do that? Can we move her over like that and then go to there? And then Linda Williams can come in on the day shift. Okay, good. So now we've got, uh, yeah, four people that are able to go and, uh, yeah, do those jobs quite well. That's good. That's wonderful. However, yeah, we are going to go and sort out these people here. We're going to create some of our own people, create two doctors that we're making ourselves. But we all know what needs to happen first, because, of course, we've got four new people, which means we need to make a little trip to the Wheel of Names. OK, there we go. The Wheel of Names has done its wonderful work once again. So let's go meet the new nurses, shall we? So over here on the day shift in intensive care, we are welcoming Poppy. And Poppy is the name of someone one's cat so welcome aboard Poppy and then on the night shift we are welcoming Tobias Furrybottom which is also the name of someone's cat I was kind of hoping that would be a person's name because that would be an amazing name but no it's somebody's cat name so there we go a couple of cat name based nurses there with Poppy and Tobias Furrybottom and then our new doctors on the day shift we've got Hugo and Hugo is the name of somebody's four-year-old son which is all very lovely so there you go parent of Hugo Hugo now has a job as a doctor at the age of four that's quite the achievement so welcome aboard Hugo and then on the night shift we've got Simba so welcome aboard Simba as well so that's quite good so we've got the four new people and now I think we can create our own people and then we can unlock that insurance company there and see how we get on with them because their objectives might be really easy and we might get a huge big part of cash from them. They might be really hard. So we'll have a little look. We have to unlock them first. So here we go. Let's get that done, shall we? So let's create a new doctor over here in intensive care. Where is the button, though? Because I'm not quite sure where it is. Um, is it that? No, that's a janitor button. Is it that one? That looks like a pen type thing. Character editor. OK, let's make our own character. Oh, this is very exciting. OK, we're going to go through and do this actually on screen because we've never seen this before. So we are going to make ourselves a character. And I think we all know who it's going to be. So hang on. I'm even just going to type it in. We're going to have the wonderful, the only Betty Cupboard. Of course we are. Let's get Betty Cupboard into the hospital. Do you know what? That'll do. That's fine for Betty Cupboard. Um, yep, yeah, age 30. That seems good. Uh, OK, so what if her hair? Can we change her hair? Can we change her hair a little bit? Oh, look at this. There's so many. <laughs> there are so many amazing options. This is wonderful. Um, do you know what? I quite like that. I quite like that. That's going to go no nonsense haircut, isn't it? There's a no nonsense approach there. And that's quite Betty. Betty likes that. Um, OK, so can we just can we just change? Can we change their level? Oh, do they start at do they start at nothing? They start at just at the bottom of the bottom of the tree. And we have to kind of level them up as they go. Oh, OK. So we can't sort of make them really good. It's going to cost 10 grand to create them. Oh, good grief. OK, right. That, that's quite expensive. OK, so we can't make them any any better. We can't sort of you know, improve their sort of uh, anything else, their sort of resident status or whatever. I don't think. Occupation is doctor. And then, yeah, level is resident. So they're going to start off at the very bottom of the ladder and they're going to have to work their way up. OK, that's fine. That's OK. So now we pick two good perks and one bad perk. OK, so what would Betty's bad perk be? Slow learner, leveling skills is much slower. We don't want that. If she's starting out as resident, we don't want that. Um, hunger increases much faster. That could be that could be true. That could be true of, uh, of Betty because she likes a bit of food. However, that does seem a very Betty-ish thing. Hard worker does not take free time breaks. She's always working away, is Betty, working very hard. I think we'll pick that one. So we've picked the negative trait. And now we need to pick two of the positive traits. OK, so she's going to be looking after people who are in intensive care. So what is going to help? What's going to be really helpful? I mean, yeah, the ones which are sort of, you know, they're making people happy while they're dealing with them. I don't know if they're going to help at all because the people are more likely they're not going to be unconscious or you know, on ventilation or whatever. Um, clean feet, not so bothered. That's quite good. Rest levels decrease slower. So we'll give you that. That's quite Betty-ish, actually. That's quite good. And then 
I mean, you're on the day shift. We could make you work much more efficiently. Or, hang on, Spartan. All your needs are reduced slower. So, although you don't take any breaks, your needs reduce slower. So that's quite good. That tire sort of negates that a little bit. And your rest levels decrease even slower. So you should be okay. Do you know what? We're going to give you Spartan. So yeah, we can't change any of that. But yeah, that's fine for Betty. That's perfect. It drew a really good sort of random face there. I like that. So here we go. 10 grand to create the wonderful, the fantastic, the classic Geek Cupboard character of Betty Cupboard. 10,000 monies. And there we go. Oopsie Corp can now be contracted to send patients. Okay, we'll do that in a second because now, of course, we need somebody else on the night shift. So Betty, oh no, it's not the bottom of the rung. It's a, it's a tier two doctor out of five. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. I can cope with that. Do we maybe want to keep training Betty up? Maybe we could train Betty in general medicine. Just get you out there. Just hang on. Maybe critical care medicine might be better. Hang on. Can we just train you in all three things? Training schedule, training schedule. Oh, okay. We'll just train you in everything. Yeah, okay. That's good. So we have Betty covered on the day shift. And then on the night shift, I think we should get somebody else in. And again, this should be no great surprise. Um, let's change their age to 30 as well. So it's the same. And we're going to go for Bernard Cupboard. Of course we are. Bernard. And here we go. Cupboard. So big Bernard. Can we give them beards? Because Bernard does have a big beard. Yes. Okay, no, the bigger the beard, the better for Bernard. All the bees. That first one looks about right. Yes. Perfect. Maybe make him a bit wrinkly. Yeah, there we go, look. There we go. He's had a hard life as Bernard. Um, accessories. Glasses, glasses, glasses. Different types of glasses. Ooh. They're a bit wonkaloids, aren't they? They're a bit strange. Um, do you know what? Let's give him... Let's give him a pair of glasses. That can be Bernard. And that'll do for Bernard's face and hair. That's okay. Not so fussed about that. Uh, yeah, that'll all do. It's all good. Right. So again, you start off as a doctor on a level two doctor. Right, Bernard. What can you be good at here then? So maybe we make it so you work really well at night because you're going to be on the night shift. And possibly maybe we get you increasing your skills a bit quicker so you can get up to speed a bit quicker. Although what's that? Scholar uses free time to study. You know, you're not going to have your free time in intensive care. Generally quite busy in intensive care. Um, yeah, so better at night. That's okay. Um, Bernard's a bit more... I mean, classically in the Geek of a Bernard's more sort of about brawn rather than brains. Bernard was always the, the you know, your fighty man. Um, I mean, what could we give you? That one there. Maybe we can make him quick. Make him quick so he runs around a bit quicker. So we can, you know, get to patient speedier. Maybe give you that. Practical diagnoses, diagnostic genius. Or do we make him a diagnostic genius? Because he might be able to diagnose things that's wrong with people. Do you know what? Give him that. That sounds quite good. However, what is going to be Bernard's downside? How about, how about he's got dirty shoes? How about we give Bernard some dirty... Although, well, hang on. Bernard, yeah, maybe because he's, a, maybe because he's big, he's big beardy Bernard, he does like a bit of food. You know, he's a, he's a he's a he's a big muscly chap who needs food to you know make sure that he can do all his stuff and you know, he's got quite a lot of sort of quite a lot of burner to support by eating lots of food so maybe we should give him fast metabolism so he just eats a lot more food that makes sense yeah I like that there you go big bearded Bernard you're gonna come and join us as well and yet that'll do for appearance not so first there we go so we've got you two joining us and then yes you can also go and train up in those skills. Just get a little bit better generally around the board. Okay, that's quite exciting. So now we've created our own two people. And I think, I think since we started the game, these two here are now one of four people that I think haven't come from the Wheel of Names. I think the first two, so hang on, over here. So we had, um, yeah, Dave Wee Hours and obviously Penge Cupboard. We named them at the very start because you know, they were the first two people we put in and they seemed you know, the, the best starting team. You want to put your A team in to begin with. And then I think since then, every single person has come from the Wheel of Names, except these two now. So that's quite a lot of names we've had from the Wheel of Names. The Wheel of Names is running out of names a little bit, but I think that's probably not too bad. I don't think we're going to hire that many more people. So I think we should be able to muddle through. I mean, of course, as we've always said, if you want to be in the game, you fancy your name appearing as a doctor, a janitor or whatever, then, yep, just let me know, put your idea out in the comments and the name you'd like, and we'll pop you on the wheel of names and you might appear. But we're not going to hire that many more people, I don't think. 
because of course we have a whole range of departments in now. So really, it's just going to be perfecting things like adding these people over here. Okay, so intensive care should now be looking pretty good. Quite happy with how they should function. So let's just make sure what are Bernard and Betty going to get up to then? So, I mean, who's on shift? Bernard should be on shift, I think. So Bernard's there with the glasses on at the back. So Betty, I think, will just go home. Yeah, Betty's going to go home. And Bernard is... Where's Bernard going then? Undergoing training. Ah, right, okay. So he's immediately going over to... Where's the training? Over there. He's going to go over there and do some training. Okay, right, that's good. Let's see then what the goal is over here for Upsy Corp. Elizabeth Johnson having a bit of a collapse. It's fine. They'll sort it out. Um, reach control doctor's rating 80%. What does that mean? What does that mean? Reach controlled doctor's... Okay, Elizabeth Johnson. It... Oh, no. <laughs> That's gone back down to zero. Okay, Elizabeth Johnson appears to have died a bit. Uh, oh, okay. I suspect... Oh, she was the one who had the, the many comas. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth Johnson. Go and have an autopsy, please. Let's go and sort that out and figure out what we did wrong. Um, yeah, what does that mean? Reach control doctor's rating 80%. And the reward is 500 experience points for all player-created characters. Okay. Controlled doctor's rating. What does that mean? What does controlled doctor's rating mean? Hang on. Where's, where's Bernard? If Bernard's going to be around here somewhere, is that Bernard? Uh, yeah. Okay. So we have to get you to a rating of 80? What, what does a rating of 80 mean, game? I don't fully understand what that means. Can we control you? Assign to a workspace. We can add you to the favourites. Okay, let's put you, you to as favourites, look. We'll add uh, Bernard and Betty as favourites. Um, what does it mean, control them? Dismiss them. Switch their shift. Select their department. What does it mean, control doctor? Does it mean once... Oh, hang on. Doctor rating. 50%, it says there. So... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. What does it mean? Control doctor's rating of 80%. Can we pick another doctor? Can we pick another doctor and see what that rating is? Like you there, your rating is 91%, but we don't control you. How do we control a doctor? I don't know how we do that. Um, there's doctor mode. So, oh, hang on. Control doctors. Oh, Oh, I see. Oh, hang on. Hang on. So that controlled doctor rating of 80%, it doesn't have to be one we've created ourselves. So we could just control that doctor there who's got a rating of 91% and go, boom, we've achieved that objective. Do you know what? I think we're going to do that. So at the moment, we're going to drop happy life. Um, although we have just got... In fact, no, hang on. Drop protect care. Because Happy Life is sending us 15 walk-ins, but five flashlights, Nino machine patients. So they're sending 20 people in. Protect Care only sending 15 people. And we're going to complete two accident events in a row for them. And the reward's pretty naff for that. Prestige bonus 15% for one whole day. Not very exciting. So park them. So stop them coming along. And we'll have Oopsie Corp, please. They pay 120%. But at the moment, they're only sending 10 people in. But... If we go to doctor mode and then we go to control doctors and uh, can we have you? Can we have you as a control doctor? Why have we only got those ones? Why have we only got that range of doctors? <laughs> who? Hang on. Who is that just there? Who are you? You are Mrs. Betts. Okay. Are you in that list? No. Why have we only got these? <laughs> um... Okay, I will admit I'm not entirely sure how to do this. Do we? Is there a button in here where we can control you? Is there some sort of some sort of exciting button that I've not seen? Hang on a minute. There must be some way of adding Mrs. Betts to that list of controlled doctors there. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to jab buttons and hope that one of them works. Oh, it's relevant to the department that we're looking at. So we did have intensive care in focus. So that brought up the intensive care doctors, but now I've changed it to emergency and we can get Mrs. Betts on board. So currently, Mrs. Betts, we're going to control you. So there we go. So we've done that. So does that mean we now complete that goal over there? Because our controlled doctor rating is 80%. I thought that might be a bit of a cop out, but um, okay. So what does this mean? What are we doing with you here? 
So currently you're just sort of hanging around the place. You're not doing anything. What's that? What's that mean? Is that going to help us? Color guide. Waiting for player treatments, examinations, high hazard, fulfilling needs. Okay, so we're just going to have to play as you now, Mrs. Betts. Okay, okay, hang on. Oh, there we go. We've completed that goal. Hooray, 500 experience points for all player-created characters. So Bernard and Betty just got a little bit better because Mrs. Betts was, I don't know, playing solitaire or minesweeper or something. Okay, right, that's good. What is next? So correctly diagnose patients of controlled doctors in intern mode. And we get 50 grand for that, which is not too bad at all. What is intern mode game <laughs> this is this is like proper steps into the unknown i don't know what intern mode is um okay hang on would it not make sense to have penge cupboard would it not make sense to have dr cupboard as the doctor that we control doctor rating 96 percent. oh dear oh mrs betts i do apologize but dr penge cupboard appears to be appears to be better than you which is a great surprise you're both brilliant I would have thought Dr. Penge's rating would have been way down. But OK, so how about then? Hang on. How do we how do we not? How do we undo you? I don't want to be I don't want to doctor mode you anymore. Can we turn that off? Um, oh, you've been bookmarked. Uh, hang on. Do we click Mrs. Betts again to take you out? How do we take you out of this, Mrs. Betts? <laughs> I don't want to follow you around anymore. You have your freedom. Please, you, you, you may go. Just, just please walk out the door now. And, and you know, go away for a bit. Okay, I don't know how to make you go away. Oh, hang on. There's a teeny tiny X right in the corner of their portrait there. Oh, that's how you do it. Okay, so if we have to... Hang on, go back to there. If we have to... What was it? Correctly diagnose patients who control doctors in intern mode. If we have to do that 10 times, why don't we do that with Dr. Penge Cupboard? Because that would make sense, wouldn't it? Um, okay, Judy Gonzalez is having a bit of a collapse. I'm sure they'll muddle through. So at the moment, Dr. Penge Cupboard is not on duty. They're currently at home. They are now probably doing some recording for YouTube or something like that. Something a bit weird. But um, yeah, when they come in, which won't be too long, we'll then follow them around and see what they get up to. And then maybe, yeah, if we... Is intern mode just where we're helping out? Is that what that means? So I don't mind so much doing that. Okay, a bit of a collapse going on. It's very busy around the hospital. Even at night time, the amount of people. Okay, Daniel Young is, is probably not well. Joe, hang on. I kind of feel like we should probably help you out here. What's going on with Daniel Young? Hang on, move that over there. It's a bit better like that. Um, okay, hypovolemic shock. Yeah, we should probably get that sorted out really quickly and then do all that kind of stuff there. But um, yeah, I think you should be okay. Actually. We'll code blue you anyway, just to make sure that you get top billing from all of our treatments and such but okay yeah, look at the amount of people moving around oh hang on hang on very important quick check is kite club still a thing they haven't moved on to something else not paper plane club yet nope still kites oh kites all the way <laughs> brilliant yay for kite club of course the first rule of kite club is bring your own kite and then the others are just like enjoy flying it and stuff right okay so get this done get through to seven o'clock Pay out the no, is it seven o'clock? Yeah, pay out the night shift wages. So even with that done, with the night shift wages down, we're only on what thirty-eight grand. That's quite good, because then of course we're going to get all the money from the overnight stays. We are fifteen percent poorer at the moment. We're picking up fifteen percent less money. Christopher Lee, good grief. Um, okay, do all of these things. Respiratory failure, though, maybe bring them back to life. That'd be quite good. Make sure that they're okay and do all of these things to them. Do these things here just to try and work out any more symptoms. But uh, yeah, that might help out quite a bit. There you go. Um, Donna Sawyer leveled up. They're now a specialist. Well done, Donna Sawyer. Um, Performing first aid on Christopher Lee. Oh, okay. That's good. They just helped out a bit there. Right, so we should... Hang on. So we should now see over here. Where's Dr. Penge? Dr. Penge. <laughs> that's not Dr. Penge. That's Dr. Wee Hours. Where's Dr. Penge? Ah, and we have a bit of a problem. So Christopher Lee needs a bed in intensive care. And I think we did run out, didn't we? Hang on a second. Hang on. We had room for one more, did we? Over in that corner. If we can sort of cram it into that corner. I'm not entirely convinced we can. Okay, this might be a bit of an issue. Um, okay, do we get rid of of a set of doors over here in the main intensive care ward and then put a bed over there. 
Because do they need that set of doors? Maybe they just need this set of doors. Or do we get rid of that set? But they're near the doctors and the nurses. Hang on. Hang on. Can we fit in a... Can we fit in a combo of bed and thing over here? I'm not entirely convinced we can. That's what they need. Okay, it's going to be... No, because they need to get to the machines that go bing and bong and boop. And we haven't got enough space for them to do that look. They can't... Oh, no, hang on. We haven't copied that. We haven't even copied that. So, no. We can't fit them in over there. Okay. This is a little bit of a bother. Do we try, then, to move all that stuff against the walls and put a couple of beds in the middle? Or do we... Oh, what can we do? We were, once upon a time, going to use that room there as an extension of the trauma centre over here, because you can only fit six beds in here. I suppose you could maybe fit a few more in, but comfortably six beds. And that's okay. I like that. That sort of works out quite well. However, we were going to expand it over into here a little bit, because there is some room over here, but maybe that needs to become another intensive care room. Maybe that needs to be an expansion of intensive care again. Got that one there. Or... Oh, hang on, but there's a janitor doing stuff there. Could we possibly move... Where would the janitor room go, though? There's nowhere for the janitor room to go. We can't really move that around. That's not going to work. Um, okay. This could be a bit of an issue, then, couldn't it? Oh, I think we might have to get rid of those doors. Uh, which is going to make... Can we get rid of one door? Can we just get rid of the one door? Hang on. Move that. Put that just there. Defibrillator just there. That's fine. Uh, go to doors. So if we remove... One door. Okay, the pair of doors goes. That That's okay for now. We'll muddle through for the moment. Right, grab this arrangement. Oh, it's like that. Of course it is. Yeah, so if we pop that there, that's okay. Okay, how about then? Hang on, hang on. We could get a door back in. So if we put that, say, there, move that little cabinet to wherever else. It doesn't really need to be here, let's be honest. But okay, we'll put the cabinet just there. In fact, you know what? Where's the um, where's the defibrillator thing? Maybe put that over there as well so it's nearer some of the beds. Pick that up and put that on that wall. And then, can we get a restricted area door back in right in the corner like that? Okay. So you can still come in over here. We could have our double doors, really. Do we put the double doors back in? You know, we're going to put the double doors back in. I like the double doors because I feel like it's got more effect if you crash in through the double doors up with you know, a patient on a stretcher or whatever, it's going to look dramatic. And I've seen that in TV medical dramas. Okay, so how about we have that like that? Okay, right. So we have got an extra bed in there. Although if we do need more, that is going to be a bit of a push. Okay, but you should be able to go to a bed. Let's make sure. So yeah, hospitalized, collapsing. Let's just make sure you can get to where you need to go. And there you go. You're in the shiny new bed. Wonderful. Right. Okay, Dr. Penge, where are you? There you are, Penge cupboard. Right, what do we do? How does this work? <laughs> I don't know what to do now. How does this whole doctor thing work? So you've got no patience at the minute. So how about then... Hang on a minute, I keep pressing 1, 2, 3 for the, t the sort of speed controls, and that's not what they are in this game. So if we do that, look, we should see Dr. Penge get a patient at some point. Uh, okay, right, yep, yeah, we'll do some... Um, do some pathology stuff on you. There we go. Sorry. Um, okay, Paul Smith. Okay, so Paul Smith has come in. They're having a chat. Oh, so it's like when we take control of the take control of the characters in an event, but it's just for one particular doctor. Okay, so we get to see what's going on in the life and times of Penge Cupboard. Now, normally I would have done this with Betty and Bernard that we just created, but of course we told them to go and do some training. So they're going to spend the day learning stuff. So this is okay. Yes, okay. And I don't think it has to be the same doctor. I think we can do different doctors. So maybe we should do Penge Cupboard. Can we get wee hours? Can we do, can we get wee hours as well? Go and see what Dave's up to. Where are you? Dave wee hours. There we go. We'll, we'll sort of watch both of them. Right. Okay. So Paul Smith, you've either got laryngitis or acute rheumatic fever. Um, no wibbly hidden symptoms. What is going to help with these? So physical exam is a good start. Do that maybe to begin with, because that seems obvious. Daniel Jackson is collapsing. There's a lot of collapsing. But, ah, palpitations. Not palpations. I've learned the difference. I'm a doctor now. Uh, right. Okay. So get... And what do you need to have that done? IV infusion. 
Are you collateral? Are they going to move you to intensive? Ah, they're going to move you to intensive care, aren't they? Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> this could be a bit of an issue, shall we say. I'm trying to be a doctor for the day. Move people out of intensive care. Um, okay, hang on, hang on. You've got various of the bits and bobs wrong with your heart. So we'll just do some of that for now. Do the basics when you've not collapsed. Okay, we'll come back to you in a second. Hang on a minute. Hang on. What's going on here? So a physical exam of Paul Smith. Right, and it's laryngitis. Okay, so we've figured out it's laryngitis. Two hidden symptoms. Just do a neck palpation as well, possibly. Um, and then give you all of those lovely things. Yeah, you have all of that, please. Okay, so we give you that. Jordan Cole is collapsing with pericarditis. That's like a heart thing. Pericarditis refers to the condition where the thin membrane or sacs around the heart is inflamed. It sounds really awful. Okay, have all of these things to keep you from being a bit dead. You are collapsing, IV. Oh, is that, is that going to keep him alive? Give him all those things as well. Give him all those things. Uh, code blue as well. Possibly should have that with the other person. Um, and then your yeah, physical exam, temperature measurement, differential diagnosis. Do all the basics. Yep, Jordan Cole is, is not well. We get that. That's okay. I'm on board with that one. So laryngitis. Just trying to figure out some final hidden symptoms. So neck palpation. Um, I mean, a laryngoscopy would sort of make sense, wouldn't it? An oral cavity inspection. Do those. That might help uncover those final hidden symptoms. And then you're done then. You can just go. Right, so now we've got Brooke Davis, who is being looked after by Dave Wee Hours. Okay, so ankle sprain, ankle fracture. Okay, so physical exam to begin with. That would make sense. We haven't had a nagging message appearing saying, oh, this person hasn't got a bed in intensive care. Maybe some people have left intensive care. Right, you've got an ankle sprain. So to treat that, we give you NSAIDs, whatever they might be, some sort of painkiller type things, and all the other bits and bobs as well. One hidden symptom, but it's not wibbly. You're going to be fine, Brooke Davis. You're going to be fine. Okay, and let's just check on you. Paul Smith. Ah, right, okay. We figured out all of your things. So you... I think you can go send a treated patient home because it's lit up. So yeah, you've, we've found out what's wrong with you. We've got your treatment sorted. So if we do that and send you home, how does that work? David Wilson is collapsing. <laughs> Please stop collapsing, everybody. It's becoming very inconvenient. Um, okay, so now who are you with now? Our pinch cupboard is with you. Gastritis, duodenitis or gallstones. That's not gone up to it's not moved i thought that might have gone up to one possibly one out of ten i don't know what intern mode is game imagine i haven't got an idea what intern mode might be maybe this is not what we're supposed to be doing uh, okay which will help treat you so physical exam and some sort of abdominal palpation might be quite good temperature measurement always good differential diagnosis very handy okay so we'll try and work that out but where is intern mode we've got normal mode there specialist mode okay hang on what's that uh <laughs> how do how do we do intern mode game is that not intern mode then oh, i don't know where intern mode is i don't quite know what that means hang on let me go and jab buttons again maybe we'll find something okay there we go I've jabbed enough buttons and i've figured out what we need to do so we have to go to that option there like we did and then we have to activate one of these tick boxes. So if we say, for example, tick no hints in diagnostics for our patients, that thing changes from normal mode to intern mode because it's become a little bit trickier. Uh, so hide the number of hidden symptoms. That can be quite difficult. And then disable pulsing hidden symptoms. That makes things very tricky. So if you turn all those on, you get specialist mode because that's like proper difficult. You don't know whether wibbly symptoms there or not. That's really tricky. So no, we're not going to do that. I think let's put no hints in diagnostics to our patients, not all patients, just our patients that we're looking after with Penge Cupboard and Dr. Dave there. So, okay, so let's go back to here then and we'll see what we can do. Right, Elizabeth Johnson, release you to funeral services. Rest in peace, Elizabeth Johnson. Um, money is looking okay, creeping up. Right. Okay, so this is Dr. Dave, Dr. Dave with the ankle sprain, and you've got one hidden symptom, it's not wibbly, you've had all this stuff treated, um, I mean that's going to be fine isn't it for an ankle sprain, you're going to be okay. 
just have some painkiller stuff and rest up a bit and you're going to be fine. So I think we send you home. Okay, so now I believe we're now working in intern mode. So here we go. Frank Davis, one of Penge Cupboard's patients. Okay, duo denitus. And look, we've got one out of ten. Okay, right, that's what we have to do. I see, I see what we have to do. Okay, this is going to be fine. This is going to be fine. So, wibbly hidden symptoms. Got to try and figure this out as best we can because we don't want you to collapse or whatever. Um, so, do we get a guide over here then? Yeah, okay. So, abdominal palpation, blood test, physical exam. That's all going to help. Um, oh, hang on. We've done all those. We did all those things. What else might help out a bit? So, blood test, microbial cultivation, gastroscopy. Maybe do one of those. Can we do that here? That is general surgery. Do you know what? Put you into general surgery and get them to do all those things to make sure that you stay alive. Because that would be quite handy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Right. So you go and do that, please. That's going to be wonderful. So we send you away. So we don't need to worry about that patient again because they're now no longer a patient of Penge Cupboard. They're a patient of another doctor up in general surgery. Okay, I see what's going on. Okay, so Carol Anderson's been interviewed by Dr. Dave. Let's go and see what we can do next. You've got conjunctivitis, either allergic conjunctivitis or bacterial conjunctivitis. How do we tell the difference? I'm not quite sure. Physical exam would help, I think. So do that to begin with. That's got to be a good starting point. So get that done. I had somebody in with Dr. Penge. This is good. Uh, okay, that didn't help at all. No idea about the eye thing. Um, neurological testing. Uh, physical exam. Done that one already. Basic eye test. Okay, basic visual test. That's going to be the same sort of thing, surely. Does that help? Uh, our Peter King is over with Dr. Penge. Okay, you've got one of those four things. And a wibbly hidden symptom. Okay, so have all those, do a physical exam, and okay, that's to do with your sort of your bowels, isn't it? Your Crohn's disease and your exocrine pancreatic insufficiency and stuff. So maybe do an abdominal palpation thing and see if that helps at all. I've got no idea. Carol Anderson, still got no idea what she's got wrong with her. Um, okay, so what is going to help? Either a physical exam or a skin allergy test. Ah, for the whole sort of allergic reaction thing. Okay, yeah, do that. That might help. Patricia Adams is collapsing. I'm sure they'll sort it out. They're quite good at that kind of thing. Uh, oh, somebody waited too long in the gift shop. Do you know what? It's okay. It's okay. They've missed out. They've missed out on some fine, high quality merchandise. Right, you've got conjunctivitis. That goes up to two. Have some eye drops. You're going to answer antihistamines. You're going to be fine, Carol Anderson. You're going to be absolutely fine. You may go home now. Right, Peter King narrowed it down to two potential things. Okay, what's going to be helpful? Stool analysis, blood tests. Oh, it's going to be long, complicated stuff, isn't it? Echo, ECG. We might have to do stool analysis and blood tests and things. Uh, do a blood pressure measurement just for good measure, because they always do that at doctors. Um, and then do temperature as well, because that seems standard. And where was the other things? Uh, yeah, blood. Blood draw is different to... Hang on, what was it? What were the things we need to do again? It was down here, wasn't it? Um, not echo. Not that. Blood test, it says. And then down here it says blood draw. Are they, are they different? Is a blood test different to a blood draw? I'm, I'm not, I think it must be, it must be the same sort of thing, just with slightly different wording going on. Um, yeah, okay, so do that, please, and evaluation as well. Let's see if we can get that sorted. Uh, okay, so we'll just keep doing this. We'll keep working our way through until we have 10 correctly diagnosed patients in fancy intern mode. Okay, but yeah, now we get to be the doctors for a bit. Okay, Joseph Scott's collapsing. I'm a little bit concerned that we don't have enough beds anymore, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, been quite quiet, I'll be honest. Dr. Penn just seen one person and sorted that out. I don't think Dr. Dave has seen anybody at all. So, you know, it's a little bit quiet right now. However, it does mean that Betty's been able to do some training and she's got her general medicine scale up to 20%. No, increase in level by 20%. Oh, crikey. That's quite good, isn't it? That's quite a lot in general medicine. Okay, so she's become significantly better. That's quite encouraging. Okay, so yeah, we are trying to work on that person there, but I think we sent him away to go up to um, to general surgery. Lisa Lopez having a bit of a collapse there. Oh, I thought he was going up to general surgery. Oh no, his no. Ah, hang on though. 
exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, that is another correct diagnosis. Okay, now I think you have to go up to general surgery. Yeah, okay, so pop up there, please. They can give you that pancreatic enzyme therapy thing, and probably you might have to go into a bed up there, but that's okay. You do have a wibbly hidden symptom, so do all those things up there, please, general surgery. Make sure that they're okay. So four out of ten, and the two doctors that we're watching have completely vanished. Good job, you two. <laughs> Where have they gone? Where have they gone? Uh, oh no, it's, it's home time. It's going to be home time momentarily, isn't it? Okay, so maybe, maybe to try and complete that goal, we then take control of some of the doctors. No, I kind of feel like we should stick with these two. We're going to stick with those two. We'll fly through the night and then, oh, hang on, Christopher Clark. Christopher Clark coming in. Hello, are we going to carry on looking at you, Christopher Clark? Or are we just going to go, no, we're done now. Um foot contusion or broken bones. Okay, maybe a physical exam might possibly identify that. So that's quite a good start. Go and have a look at the foot. If the foot's got bones broken in it, then that's probably a good sign. Uh, the, you know, not a good sign for the patient. Um, oh, hang on, I have all those things anyway. There you go. Um, okay, that didn't help. So I suspect possibly what we might need to do is go and do an x-ray on your foot because that'll help us work it out. Hang on, can you do differential diagnosis first? to work that out because I think maybe you should be able to figure out whether it's a contusion or a, ba a bone break because that should I mean I'm no doctor obviously but I thought maybe that would help but uh, there you go foot contusion up to five out of ten numbing ointment I think that's kind of you done you can go home wonderful stuff okay and then I think that means Dr Dave can also go home Peter Brown having a bit of a collapse Cookie has leveled up there now a specialist that's exciting okay so we'll fly on through the night as best we can, Lisa Lopez Huff. Oh, you're in a really bad way. You're in a very bad way. Uh, am I right? Have all of the things. I don't hold out much hope for you, to be honest, Lisa Lopez. But there we go. Uh, Rabbit Tiny Tots leveled up there now as specialists. Right, let's fly on into the morning, unless we get interrupted by an event, which I kind of hope we don't, because I'd like to complete that to so get five more correctly diagnosed patients. That'd be quite good. Um, oh, there you go. Bernard. Uh, got general medicine skill up by 19%. That's pretty good. They're going to go and do something else now. So let's go through to the morning and we'll pick things up again with Dr. Penge and Dr. Dave. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Doctors Penge and Dave are working very hard. We're up to 9 out of 10 correct diagnoses. Here we go. Can we get another one? You're with Dr. Penge. Something wrong with your leg. Okay, maybe a physical examination could help out quite a bit with that. Hang on a minute. Click that button. That would help, wouldn't it? So go and have a little look. Uh, okay, that didn't help at all. Uh, okay, what would help? What would help with that? So we need either physical exam didn't help. X-ray of a lower limb. Okay, do you know what? Let's get that done. Nice and simple. Uh, where are we? X-ray, upper limb. X-ray, lower limb. There we go. So please get that done. Also have all of those things to help with your current symptoms. Uh, William Hill is collapsing. Deary me. Um, okay, Susan Lewis. You're with Penge Cupboard. Oh, because the other person's gone away to x-ray land. Okay, right, have eye drops. Something wrong with your eye. Okay, physical exam would make sense. Basic visual test might also help out. Casey Anderson, deep wound on hand. Right, okay. So you're with Dr. Dave. Try to sort that out. Yep, you can go home, Casey Anderson. So, oh, you pay quite a lot of money there, Casey Anderson. That's quite nice. Uh, okay, Susan Lewis. Still no closer to figuring out what the problem might be. Physical exam is not going to help with any of these things. Um, okay, skin allergy test. That might help. Do you know what? You should probably go up to neurology because they're quite good at dealing with eyes up there. They're pretty good at all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, have all of those things with an eye symbol on them because that looks like a sensible thing to do. So we're not going to get another person from there which is a bit of a shame so we're not going to get you okay right dave cirrhosis hepatic no hepatic fibrosis or hepatitis b that sounds really awful whichever one it is it all sounds thoroughly thoroughly unpleasant indeed okay right let's get this sorted okay still waiting for dr dave and dr penge to diagnose this one final person but good news betty cupboards finished her training and now critical care medicine skill has gone up by eight percent so currently on 15 percent not too bad at all okay dana brown do you know what it is it's now one of two things and they're both dealt with by general surgery okay 
Can we figure out what it is? Or is that more of a thing for them to do? So blood test might help. We've done the abdomen thing. Um, it's going to be a blood test. It's going to be a blood test, which can take quite a while to get the result back. Okay, hang on. Let's go and do that. Blood draw. Yeah, go and do that, please. Yes, go and send that away for testing. Not quite sure how long you'll have to wait. There's quite a bit of blood on the floor just there in Dr. Day's room. Dr. Day, what have you been doing? <laughs> Okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure the janitor will be along to clean it up in a second. They'll make it all lovely and spick and span. Um, nothing going on for Dr. Penge, look. Dr. Penge just having a lovely, relaxing time. Could we at least correctly diagnose just one more person from these two? Because, I mean, we could just go and take on all the doctors and just get it done. But I kind of feel like that's a bit of a cop-out. We started with Penge, Cupboard and Dave we hours. I think we should finish this with them. Um, you, the blood test didn't help at all. Botherations. Okay, so it's going to be general surgery with you, whichever one it is, but we're not quite sure what is wrong with you still. Um, okay, what's going to... Oh, temperature measurement. That's a nice simple thing we can do. That's really easy. Hang on, do that. That might whittle some down, possibly. Will it whittle any down? No, it didn't do that at all. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> what else could help? Come on, come on. Fast. I don't even know what that is. Can, can we make you go fast? That is... That's in the trauma centre. Okay, not that then. Don't do that. Blood test, blood test, physical exam, physical exam. Okay, hang on. Uh, that's fast again. Interview, blood test, blood test. Uh, transient elastography. Uh, <laughs> where's that? What department does that? General surgery. Okay, you might need to go to general surgery, I'm afraid. They've got some amazing things they can do up there. Um, do you know what? Do all of those things, general surgery. Find out what's wrong with Dana Rodriguez there. Fraser Rodriguez having a collapse, possibly related. I don't know. Come on. Come on. Doctors Penge and Dave. You've not done too much in the way of diagnosis today. Come on. One person is all we want. One person before you clock off in a couple of hours. Dr. Penge just cleared off. <laughs> Come back, Dr. Penge. Come back and diagnose some people immediately. Right, here we go. Dana Brown, blood draw. <gasps> this is it. We know it's irritable bowel syndrome. Press the button. We complete that goal. That is wonderful. Okay, right. So vitamins, supplements, diet modification. Uh, and we've covered all your symptoms off. Okay, that was pretty effective. We got given 50 grand which is really nice. Okay, so hang on a minute. Just let that person clear off. Right, okay, yep, yeah, bye-bye. Right, they've gone home. So now what's next? What's next on that goal? Treat patients of control. Doctors in intern mode, naught out of 20. Okay, so we have to do all that kind of thing again to get clinic patients per day up to 20. That doubles the amount of clinic patients and they do pay 135%. That's pretty good. That's not too bad at all. And we have got 202,000 monies right now. And again, I know it's not very exciting. It's not a very exciting, snazzy thing to do. But I think we should possibly go and pay off a little bit of our bank loan that we've had for many days now. We owe 100 grand at the moment. So maybe take that down to 60 grand. So we only pay $600 in interest now, which is still quite a lot. We must have wasted so much money on that. But we only owe 60 grand and we still do have 162 grand remaining, which is pretty good. So with that, maybe next time we could fill that gap in. Don't know what could go down there, possibly some labs or whatever. Maybe fill that gap in. I know up here we could get another couple of operating lounges in. That wouldn't be so bad. There's a big bit over here not being used. Not quite sure what we could do with that. Maybe get some more beds in over there. Just, you know, properly sort of flesh the place out a bit because there are some gaps. Put some stuff over there, maybe. And then go up here, maybe get some more labs in. Maybe, actually, with that amount of money, we could get in on this floor another MRI scanning room, whatever it is, maybe two, and a couple of CT rooms as well because they often get busy, and there's only one each of those in the hospital, so possibly that could help out as well, but I think we'll finish up for now, but at least now we know what the intern mode is, we know what that kind of thing is. I imagine, I imagine what's going to happen is, with this particular sort of uh, objective tree for UpsyCorp, we're going to do that for intern mode, so it's going to say, yep, yeah, okay, create diagnose people, then treat people, and then you're good, 
And then I imagine what's going to happen. It's going to go, okay, do the same thing on the next level of difficulty. So we have to tick another one of those boxes. So it's, uh, what is it? Next up is what mode? I'm not going to switch it on. Uh, so next up it's resident mode. So we'd have to then go into resident mode. And then we'll get the same thing again, but in specialist mode. Okay. Okay, that's fine. We'll leave it on that for now. We'll leave it on intern mode for the moment because we sort of know where we are with that. And that'll help us complete that goal. Get another 10 people coming into the hospital. That's a really good thing. So maybe next time we could look at that as well, possibly do a little bit of that. I don't know. But yeah, I think it might be quite good to get some of the x-ray, not x-ray, what are they called? Some of the radiography rooms in up here. That might help out quite a bit in the long run around the hospital. So we'll look at doing that next time as well. But yeah, we'll come back and see what happens. Oh, and also actually, yeah, we'll check on Betty and Bernard as well. We'll make sure they're okay and training up and all that kind of stuff. Because of course, we don't want to forget Betty and Bernard. Who could forget them? So we'll check on them as well. But yeah, we'll do that when we come back to the game. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Move out of the way, friend. I'm going to completely ignore you and do some comment moderating. <laughs> Kung Fu Croquet. Maria, you've broken my heart. There you go, some more flowers that I stored at the back of my pants. Lovely. <laughs> there we go. As you can see, I'm having the wildest of times. Enormous banana mask.